CBS Sports Network, College Sports Nation, Sirius XM, Channel 91 as well. The NBA draft two days away. Two Kansas Jayhawks likely to be picked in the first round. And the head coach of the Jayhawks is on the line right now. He is Bill Self. And, Bill, i got to imagine draft week is a different type of feeling for a head coach. Describe what's going on for you right now over the next 48 to 72 hours. Well, I'm, I'm really excited for the guys. I mean, uh, a little nervous for them, excited for them. I know this is a, a world in which they dream of entering, that now it's, it's right there at the cusp of occurring, and, and uh, certainly uh, uh, hope that they both put themselves in a position to give them the best chance to, to uh, uh, be selected as high as possible, but also understanding when they go is probably not as important as where they go in the fit and those sorts of things. So uh, I'm excited for them. Bill, you know, you've had so many good perimeter players throughout your coaching career. In terms of upside and in terms of long-term potential, where does Ben McLemore stack up against the best perimeter players that you've coached? Well, the best perimeter player I've coached is Darren Williams. And, and, uh, but I only had him for one year. We recruited Darren and, and coached him for a year. And then, then uh, uh, we left to come to can uh, down to Kansas. And, and when I had him, he was a great, great, great prospect, but he wasn't a great player yet. Uh, mm -hmm. He improved so much over the next couple of years and, and got to the point where he was, you know, arguably, a, uh, you know, at some point in time, as good a point guard as it was, but as there is in the world. And, yeah. and uh, he's still an all star. So I, I, I don't know if I see Ben at that right there, but I do see Ben as being a, a better prospect when we first got Darren. I, I think that. I think, you know, we've only had him for one year, and, and what he did in that one year was uh, the best freshman season I've ever had a kid have. And, and he basically led a bunch of seniors as a freshman this year and, and, and did a remarkable job. I, I think his ceiling is so high, John. I, I, don't, I don't think he's where he, he – I don't even think he's scratching where he can go. Uh, uh, but, but on the flip side, there's a lot of things he can still tighten up. And, and which, me, to me – uh, you know, you got that potential tag around his neck because uh, uh, he's going to get so much better, and I think it's going to happen quickly. You know, Bill, I've watched him obviously all year for you, and, you know, there were some moments where you just had to hold your breath and just, you know, you couldn't believe what you were seeing. You know, we saw him make six out of six threes against Iowa State and drop 33 points and have so many memorable games. But it feels like right now the closer and closer – players get to the draft, the more and more stock is put in workouts and not in the body of work throughout the course of a season. Do you think in Ben's case, potentially people are looking too much at what he's doing in these workouts and not what he did in between the lines of Kansas? You know, I, I can't answer that, John, because if I'm a, uh, an NBA team, and I told Ben this, if I'm an NBA team and I'm seriously considering investing so much money and and, and, and and, and really, uh, uh, the welfare of the franchise, not saying that one person carries the franchise, but obviously the teams, teams picking early need to get better. I mean, this is important. I, I, I would, I'd really struggle if, if guys didn't come in and, and compete uh, uh, and, and go against other guys and that kind of stuff. Uh, and, 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 and Ben, in his, his situation, uh, for the most part, he's kind of picked and choose what he wants to do due to representation, which is fine. Agents have the right to do whatever – they want to do, but I think in his case, uh, uh, since there's no clear cut number one, you got to make sure that you show everybody that that you know you're willing to do this and outplay people, or you don't, or you or you're basically saying that you know I don't want it this bad, at least from an appearance standpoint. And, and I wish Ben would have worked out for more teams. Uh, so when you only work out three or four times, and, and, and most of it's individual improvement type stuff, and you have a couple of bad shooting days or whatever, then all of a sudden the, the, the rep falls on you that the workouts haven't gone good, which I don't know if that's necessarily the case, but I do think that, that uh, uh, I wish he'd probably done a few more of them, and, and, uh, and then therefore, you know, the word spreads like wildfire, just like it does if it's negative. If it's positive, it spreads. If it's negative, it spreads, and, and certainly he, he is he is a great prospect. He's a terrific player, and and uh, I hear that he's all over the board. He could still go one. He could go seven. All that stuff, and, and uh, I think that's probably pretty true because I think there's going to be a, a, a lot of things happen in the next 48 hours to to better posture himself with the the franchises that are selecting. And, and uh, but once they get him in and they interview him, they just know what a great person he's got because there's not a better kid to draft. 
Bill, you've went on and on about Ben McLemore, the prospect, and his upside, and you know his ability to play the wing position. But what about Ben McLemore, the competitor? Does he have the DNA to take a game by the throat and take over it time and time again? Because you know the facts are the facts. Against Michigan for the first 29 minutes, he looked like the best player in college basketball. He had 20 points in that first 29 minutes. Then he didn't score a point again. We know about Ben McLemore, the prospect, but you know him better than anybody else. How would you describe Ben McLemore, the competitor? I think he's a terrific competitor. I, I think, you know, there's, there's so many things. People make such a big deal out of, out of uh, uh, you know, different scenarios and different games and, and, uh, and how things played out in certain situations. And you can spin it however you, however you want to to make the stacks kind of align with what you're thinking. Here, here, here's the deal with Ben. Ben is he he, he wasn't the alpha dog mm-hmm. on our team as a 19 year old freshman that he would be next year as a 20 year old sophomore, as a 21 year old junior, right. which is the guy that he's competing against for the most part. You know, at a similar position moving forward. He, he he's he's naive. He's green. He hasn't done the same things and been exposed to the same things that a lot of these guys have. So therefore, the appearance is well, he's not. Uh, as hungry as he should be. The, the kid is hungry. The kid works. The kid, the kid uh, uh, is probably as coachable and as and as pleasant to coach as anybody that I've ever had. I mean, you can ride him, and it's always yes or no, sir. How do I get better? I mean, and but but there are times that I think he should have taken over. But you know, when you're 19 year old and you, you hadn't been your best player on your high school team ever, you haven't been your best player on your AAU team. You've always been the guy to kind of defer, and you got four seniors. When things aren't going well, I think sometimes he did defer to let somebody else do something too much. Uh, but to, but this is what I tell people. I said, you know, I don't know how fast it'll happen because I think it's such so misleading. We get freshmen all the time that we think is going to be this and that. Well, sometimes it takes till January or February to become what you think they would be because there's a the transitional phase. I think then by January or February, I think he can get 13 – 15 points a game for yeah. these teams that are drafted. I, I, I think he would, uh, uh, and, and because he's going to grow more into a comfort level of being what they want him to be, and, and so I, that to me would concern me as much. Uh, mm-hmm. the, 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 the dry spells, this and that. Maybe that was the fault. You know, he, we we had a terrific team, as you know, John. But we also played without a point guard. You right. know, Elijah did a great job for us, but he never played point in his life, and, and so. He didn't really have some of the opportunities that others had to just get easy shots off of other guys' plays. And and so I, I don't really read into it as much as what some other people have. Kansas coach Bill Self joining John Rothstein here on the Tim Brando Show, nationally simulcast, CBS.